six, and now ready. Look at verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. This was, this was an obedient servant. And I pray you'll be an obedient servant. To hear it and to do it. To read it and to do it. To learn it and to do it. And to study it and to carry it out. That is the beauty of studying the Bible. We're not studying the Bible for exam after all. We're not studying for why after all. We're not studying for, you know, just writing an exam. We're studying so we can practice it. So that as we do it, we carry it out. It will have a real mark evidence in our lives that we're real children of God. And so he went out and did what the Lord had told him to do. And then he came back to report back to the Lord. I have done what you have said I should do. But this is the response and the attitude of the people. And then the Lord said, go quickly. Go quickly into the streets and the lanes of the cities and bring in hither the poor, the maim and, and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done. Think about that. It is done. Think about that. You know, sometimes this is not the first time we're talking about proclaiming it and publicizing it and publishing it. Have you done it? Have you told your neighbors? The handbills you have got, did you send it out? And the word of salvation, testimony, he wants you to give to other people. Have you given that? Because he said, do it. And then this servant came back, the disciple came back and he said, it is done. According as to what you have commanded, and yet there is room. I pray that we'll be obedient to the word in Jesus' name. We're looking at Matthew chapter 22, obedience to the word as a servant. As a disciple, as somebody the Lord has given the word to you, that you know the word of salvation, preach that word of salvation to other people. You know, in the earlier years and days, our ministry, Deeper Christian Life Ministry, you know what we used to do? In the bus, we'll rise up and we'll talk about salvation. Actually, the passage is talking about, go and tell them the word of salvation. And at the, you know, in the boss, we say, this is the word of salvation. At the train station, in the taxi, in the classroom, in everywhere we went on the street, we told the people the word of the Lord. Because that's what he said, go and do, go and tell them and invite them, invite them to Christ. And tell them salvation is available. And tell them that all the blessings that Calvary has provided, everyone can now come and receive. And today, how many of us are doing that? How many of us are sitting down with strangers and with neighbors and with, you know, people and neighbors that we never they have not been talking to? And now we're talking to them and we're saying, my friend, do you know there's something called salvation? Jesus came into this world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And if you'll turn away from your sin and receive him as a personal savior, he will save you. How many people are doing that today? The Lord wants us to do it. And from this day, you'll rise up and do it. In Matthew chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 22, verse 8. Then said he to his servants, all his servants. You see that in the plural. It's not just the servants that are, you know, old or the servants that are young or the servants that, you know, are very, very active or the servants we call workers. It's everyone, everyone that names the name of Christ. Everyone that says, I'm a child of God. I listen to the word of God and I take Jesus Christ as my savior, as my Lord, as my master, as my director. And he tells me what to do and I do it. Everyone, he tells all the servants. This is what he tells them in verse 8. He says, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidding are not, were not worthy. Go ye therefore. You hear that? Go ye therefore. He's telling us, go and tell them the provision that the Heavenly Father has made. Go and tell them the salvation that is now available, the forgiveness that is now available, the transformation of life that is now available. Go and tell them, go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. So those servants went out. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. They left every other thing and they put the first things first. And then they exalted and esteemed the work of the Lord as number one. Those servants, they left every other thing and they went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. As these ones obeyed the Lord, 
So the Lord is challenging us to you that we're going to obey him. We're going to obey him in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 10, we're looking at verse 16. It says, Behold, I sent you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. But that's not an excuse. And your sheep and their wolves, and they might be abusive or destructive or murderous or whatever. That's not an excuse. It says, I'm still sending you out, and we go out to them. Those uh, difficult uh, neighbors, offensive neighbors, hard hearted neighbors, everyone, the men and the women, the uncooperative neighbors, everyone, I'm sending you out to them. The young people, I'm sending you to them. You know, those young people today, they might be here or there, they might act this way or act that other way. Just go to them and tell them of the salvation that Jesus Christ has given us. And you tell them also about the retreat that is coming, that when they come, the Lord will turn their lives around. I said they will turn their lives around. And they will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, the Lord can take anybody, any life, no matter how bad they are, vile, they are disobedient, they are how sinful they are. And he can turn their lives around and they will never be the same again. That's why the Lord is saying that you are a child in the kingdom, a sheep in the fold, and I'm sending you out in the midst of those wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Don't fight them. Don't abuse them. Don't retaliate. Be as simple and as harmless as doves. And be wise. And the Lord will help every one of us in Jesus' name. In John chapter 10, verse 16. John chapter 10. We're looking at verse 16. It says, And all the sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. The Lord is saying that he's sending us out because many people are still out there. They're not born again yet. They do not know the Lord yet, and the Lord is saying, I want them to be saved. I died for them. I shed my blood for them. And many people that are roaming the streets in this city and in many cities of our country, the Lord is sending you out as a child of God. I tell them something good is waiting for them at the retreat. And tell them of the goodness of the Lord, of the grace of God, of the uh, abundance of the Lord that the Lord is providing. And then you can even pray with them there and get them saved. You can even pray with them there and get them healed. And after that salvation, after that healing, and after the blessing of God coming upon them as you pray with them, even before the retreat, then you bring them to the retreat and many, many more things they need the Lord will provide in their lives in Jesus' name. Remember what the Lord has said, all the sheep I have, I have them, I know them. I want them to come in, all the sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. I see going to bring them by you telling them, by you inviting them, by you preaching to them, by you influencing them, and by you drawing them into the kingdom. It says, them I must bring. They shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, and there shall be one shepherd. I'm looking at Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Revelation chapter 22. We're looking at verse 17. The Lord expects us to be obedient to his word. When he gives a commandment, he wants us to obey. When he says, this is what to do, he wants that done. That's what shows that you're a disciple. That's what shows that you're a child of God. That's what shows that you're a follower of the Lord. If there's no obedience to the word of God, how do we show that we are children of God? I pray you'll obey in Jesus' name. And as we're preparing for this retreat, having just a few days more, today is Monday, and we're starting on what day now? Today is 21st, and we're starting when? 24. And it will continue till 27. And that all these days, you make sure you reserve them for this retreat. And then your brother, your sister, your neighbor, everyone, you are, are you ready? Are you getting ready? Because God is ready. All things are now ready. And we're going to have the blessings of the Lord. And then with excitement and joy, enthusiasm, we're all rushing there, running there. And great will be our blessings in Jesus' name. Now in the Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that hear us say, Come. If you have heard about it, if you have known about it, tell other people to tell them, come. 
You can tell them by word of mouth. You can tell them through the telephone. You can tell them by sending a text. You can, we can tell them over the radio. We can tell them over the television. We can tell them through the newspapers. We can tell them through the various medias available. The point is we're telling them effectively, come, come, and they will come. And let him that has such come, even if nobody is inviting, that is, you have not been invited by anybody, but you are hearing. Already you know where it is, you know when it is, and the Lord is saying, if you are thirsty and you want the provision that Calvary has made available, all things, whatever it is you need, physical or spiritual, and also the assurance of getting to heaven when you die. The Lord is saying, whosoever is thirsty, whosoever is desirous, whosoever is having the passion, the desire for the blessings of God coming upon your life, let him come. And then he says, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life with fasting. With sowing his seed, with giving large amount of money. How? Really. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Why am I emphasizing this? I'm emphasizing this because you, I don't know whether you've heard this before. When good people keep quiet, evil thrives. Evil will increase. Evil will gain ground when good people who know the truth never voice out the truth. When people are emphasizing money and this and that, and that's not the emphasis of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church is going the wrong direction. If the people who know the teaching of Christ and the doctrine of the Bible, if they're quiet and they allow the wrong doctrine to just be emphasized, emphasized, then all that is going to gain ground and destroy the real center of Christianity. That's why we're emphasizing what the Lord has emphasized, that he paid the price for us on the cross of Calvary. And now he says, and whosoever will, let him come and take that water of life freely. And as you come, the Lord will make it available. Salvation available. Victory over sin available. Healing available. Deliverance available. And strength for the weak available. And all the blessings of Calvary available for everyone in Jesus' name. We come to point number three, participation of saints and sinners in the great gathering. Participation of saints and sinners in the great gathering. We're looking at Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. And I'm reading now from verse 18. Luke chapter 14, looking at verse 18. And they all with one consent, with one accord, as if they had seen one another, with agreement, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excuse. I told you already that actually Jesus Christ was directing this at the religious people, at the Jews. And he said, these people, salvation has come to them. He's calling them to repentance. He's calling them to spiritual blessing. And they're making excuses. And they're saying, I've got this material thing. I cannot come. Have me excused. Is that not the reason why some people are not at the Bible study? They know about the Bible study. And they know the riches they're going to have at the Bible study. But they say, I'm going through extramural studies. I cannot come. Please excuse me. I'm on a particular journey. And I'm, you know, having this. And that, excuse me, I cannot come. I'm doing overtime. Excuse me, I cannot come. I'm uh, looking at this particular project and this particular company. Excuse me, I cannot come. God is not going to give you salvation if you don't seek salvation because your business is keeping you away from seeking salvation. Or maybe it is your business keeping you away from getting strong in the Lord. You're not just going to get strong in the Lord without asking, without praying. Other people, it's like, you know, it is another thing. This one says, I've got this five yoke of oxen. I want to go and try them. I've got these uh, people I just employed. I want to see their ability and their productivity. Excuse me, I cannot come. Is this not the reason why some people are not coming to the retreat? Our family is having extended family meetings. 
And this is the only time when we can have that meeting. Excuse me, I cannot come. Or I'm taking some exams at this particular period. I'm sorry, I cannot come. Or this is the only time I can go for holidays overseas with my family. And because of that, I cannot come. All those excuse makers, they're going to be excused out of the kingdom of God. I pray that will not happen to you in Jesus' name. But you know, the people that really want to serve the Lord, they don't give any excuse. And this other one said, in verse 20, another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Marriage should be a blessing. It becomes a hindrance to some people. You know, some people who have gotten married and because of marriage, I'm sorry I cannot do evangelism. You know, I just got married. I'm sorry I cannot go and preach. I just got married. I'm sorry I cannot have that commitment, consecration. I've just gotten married. Don't allow these good things to hinder you from getting to the kingdom of God. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall man give in exchange for his soul? Marriage, children, money, land, employment, and all those things hindering people from the kingdom of God. I pray you will not be hindered. I said I pray you will not be hindered. Look at uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24. Some people, it is their position that hinders them. They say, well, I know that a deeper life retreat is really going to be a spiritual retreat and God is going to really turn people around. And if I could be there, I know what God will do. But you know, the, the environment in that place and, you know, where we have a location, how can I be there? They're thinking of the physical convenience or inconvenience. I'm telling you that hell will be more inconvenient than any retreat location. And why don't you endure whatever it is you have to endure so you can get to heaven and escape the damnation and the punishment and the pain of hell and just say whatever happens, my position, my personality, I'm going to be there and then you'll be there and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 24 verse 25. And as a reason of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. And answered, go thy way. This time, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He never called. He never called. He's now in hell fire. Think about that. That, you know, there are people that say, I know it is true. I know this is the right thing to do. I know how to be there. But I have some other things I'm thinking about now that is not convenient for me now. And when I have convenient season, I will send for you. He never sent. Again, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. Excuse makers. The people that make excuses, and because of those excuses, they're not able to get to the kingdom of God. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which had the force began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Here the Lord is saying, how shall we escape the judgment of God if we refuse the salvation of the Lord? That's what the Lord is saying. We should not give any excuse that you hearing my voice and hearing this teaching from the word of God today, from the words of Jesus Christ, you'll not give any excuse. You'll be at this retreat. I said you'll be at this retreat. And then you influence all the people under your control, under your influence, will be at the retreat as well. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25, Hebrews chapter 12, we're looking at verse 25. See that she refuse not him that speaketh. The servants of the Lord are going out and they're inviting us and they're telling us this is the word of the Lord. The servants of the Lord are preaching the word of salvation.